Good morning and welcome to wake up in the word it's time for you to get up it's turn it up tuesday we got big e in the house and of course we got jens johnson and i am coming from loveland colorado and me and e were in the back kind of picking on jens because she's putting on that sweater and and he's like you're putting on a sweater like you're in the north pole in colorado so <laughs> matter of fact out here right now for the next three days we're gonna have some pretty warm weather so uh we're blessed with that so without mm. you know any mm. further uh hiccups from me um i want to welcome in mark latham he's saying good morning we got good dave morning. johnson in the house saying big e wow here we hey, go i was just asking about him yes we were just talking about you man so when you drive through here i'm gonna be waving <laughs> so if you're coming in live type of one like you know and if you're coming in on the replay hashtag replay um we love you guys thank you all for coming in and for all of your support and we're going to continue to rock this conversation out of luke chapter 8 and so i'm going to kick us off in prayer and you know how we do it jens jumps in and kicks the show off and then he's going to share his heart so here we go father we just thank you this morning father we thank you that you've gotten us out of bed father we thank you that we have another day of life and breath because there is no day promised. Yeah. The only promise that we know is that you love us and that mm -hmm. you're gonna take care of us and that all the plans that you have for us, Jeremiah 29, 11, you know the plans you have for us. You know what you already have planned in our lives. And so Father, we just follow you in that journey. And so Father, we ask that you would bless this broadcast. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would intervene in this broadcast because we know that this is a place of healing. This is a place of rest. This is a place of prayer. This is a, a place where the community of believers come together and receive a word from heaven. And so, Father, shut our mouths and let your Holy Spirit ride today. Father, we just cling to you this morning, and we thank you, God, that we're able to read out of the book of Luke and getting all of this revelation, this good stuff, these good nuggets to motivate people and to also help them to understand that this reading of the Bible, that the Bible is rest, that gives us peace, that gives us understanding, that gives us hope. And so Father, we just thank you because this life manual is something that nothing can ever compare to it. No matter how much we push and grind and, and do what we do, nothing ever compares to the word of God. And so, Father, we just thank you. We praise you this morning and we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm, amen. Amen. I'm telling you what. So we are, we love it when Big E is on the show because Big E comes Ooh. with big, big energy <laughs> and with big love Ooh. and a big heart, you know. Uh, um, uh, and I'm telling you, we're on Luke chapter eight. Mm. So those of you who might not remember or might not know what we're doing here, maybe you're watching the replay because you're not crazy like us getting up <laughs> at this time. <laughs> But what we're doing is we're reading a chapter a day in Luke. So then when we get to the 24th, we finish on Christmas Eve and, and we can really celebrate um, the birth of Jesus Christ. And, and with and you know, the we have Jesus as the reason for the season and we've got him, got him right there in the center of our life. The chapter eight is one of my most favorite ones. And I'm telling you, when we got on the studio, uh, we said the same thing. All of us, you know, man, this chapter is packed full of great stuff. But it's really it's the it's the um, the parable of the sower. And in Luke 810, Jesus said to you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest, it is given in parables that seeing they may, may not see and hearing they may not understand. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, Big E's going to jump in and really go through that whole parable and explain what that means. Because 
There is a lot of wisdom in this parable. So, Biggie, thank you for getting up. Thank you for coming in. And let's see what's on your heart today. Wow. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to be here and wake up in the word. Um, wow. I don't take it for granted. Uh, like like uh, Pastor Paul said, you know, thanking God for another day. We could have stopped the show right there. You know, just thanking him for another day. Brand new grace, brand new mercy. You know, I don't think we realize um, how many how good a day is until um, h- how good waking up <clears throat> period is uh, until um uh, something like COVID happens, you know, and, and, and people are trying to breathe and just all the normal things, the miracles that we get every day that, you know, just become normal until you can't do what you usually do. And so it's just good to be here. And so what I, what I had gotten from the power of the sower, um, uh, you know, and, and I'll just read that from chap, um, verse five, uh, a sower went out to sow seed and he sowed it. Some fell along the travel path and was, and I'm reading from the Amplifier. So in this case, I'm, you know, too much details. Um, where we at here? Uh, some fell along the travel path and was trodden underfoot and the birds of the air ate it up. And some seed fell on a rock. And as soon as it was sprouted, it withered away because it had no moisture. And other seed fell in the midst of the thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it off. And some seed fell on good ground and grew up and yielded crop a hundred times as great. And then he said, I say these things. Um, He called, uh, hold up. As he said these things, uh, he called out. He said, who has ears? Let him hear. Who is listening? Let him listen. Consider and understand by hearing. So now we jump to, um, okay, verse nine. And he and his disciples, his disciples ask him, what is the meaning of this parable? And then he says, he said unto them, to you, it has been given to comprehend uh, progressively, to know, to recognize and understand more strongly and clearly the mysteries and secrets of the kingdom of God. For others, they are just parables so that though looking, they may not see and hearing, they may not comprehend. And what this stuck out to me with that was privileged information. You know, um, like you were saying, the Holy Spirit um, on the inside of us, you know, um, <laughs> and, and and all the nuggets that are in here. And so when I think of privileged information, it's like anybody, anybody can pick this book up. But to understand the mysteries of what it really means, I, I just took it. I took it from the standpoint of just saying, you know, how special we are to God that he would give us privileged information. It reminds me kind of of the secret service. You know, everybody's got an earpiece in their ear. Oh, you did that, Pastor Paul, at church, you know. Y- y- you know, y'all was, uh, you know, at church and you had you the security team and everybody had the earpiece and while everybody else was walking in saying praise the Lord and all this stuff, you guys was getting information and you're moving a certain way and nobody really knows why you're moving the way you're moving because you got an earpiece in your ear and you guys are communicating. And that's what I felt like when it was just breaking down the sower part of this chapter. I said, man, we get privileged information. That's why um, we don't, (laughs) I'm going to put Pastor Paul on the spot. That's why you and your wife moving to Colorado was seen unsane to some people because you got privileged information. What was the privileged information? Go. Not a whole chapter, not a whole book, not a whole verse, just one word. Go. It's time to go. And so that should give us some comfort that as we're walking this walk, uh, everybody's not going to understand. It's going to look crazy sometime. But as long as we know that, you know, God is the one who's directing us and moving us, it really doesn't matter, um, uh, you know, what anybody else thinks. And, And that's where faith kicks in, you know, because uh, faith is an isolator. You know, it, it'll, it'll, it'll make you feel like, you know, am I the only one that, that's seeing this? You know, am I the only one that's comprehending this? And so I believe that's where that seed, where it's talking about seed that has fallen on good ground. I won't go into the rest because after that, you know, I think it was, uh, uh, verse 12, it breaks it all down, but I'll jump back to Jens of Pastor Paul, but the privileged information that we get, <clears throat> even this morning, even on wake up in the word, that helps us to, um, as we always share, to repent, to change, to correct, to inspire, um, to sharpen our our tools in the Lord. You know, all of that stuff is privileged information. And we get to see the fruits of that as we continue to be a light and impact lives around the world. 
Mm, man, I'm telling you what, I love that privilege information. I love that. I got that written down. Big E's always yeah, got something, you know, and, and what you were talking about, you know. So some people, it says those, when you go to that verse 12, it says those by the wayside are they that hear, mm -hmm. they hear the word, but they really don't understand. Like you said, yeah. they just think it's a parable. Yeah. So they hear the word. They think it's a parable and because they don't understand, they're not aligned. Their heart isn't soft and ready. Mm -hmm. And so they hear the word, then come at the devil and he takes away the word out of their hearts mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they, they didn't have their, their heart wasn't ready and prepared to receive the privileged information. Mm -hmm. They read it. Or they hear it and they think this is just a parable. And of course, the seed is the word of God, mm -hmm. you know. So then in 13, it says uh, they are they on the rock. So the seed that falls on the rock are they which when they hear, they receive the word with joy. Mm -hmm. Man, they're happy. They are, they're like, oh, this is a good word. This is a great parable. This mm -hmm. is awesome. But they have no root while which for while they believe it for a little time because they don't have root and because their heart is not prepared, um, they will be tempted and they fall away real easily. But they were excited when they got it. Yeah. <laughs> they were excited yeah. when they heard it. Yeah. But again, their, their heart's not mm -hmm. prepared. And that which fell among thorns, so the word of God that falls amongst thorns are they, which when they have heard, they go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So there, you know, you think about thorns, well, thorns, they're a little, they're a little thorny, <laughs> you know, they're a little honoring. They're a little, they, they got their... They got their hearts set on the things of the world, you know, and then 15, it says, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, they keep it and they bring forth fruit with patience. So their heart is prepared. They're good. So, you know, just like we say, prayer is prep. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor Paul, he's, let me tell you what, Jesus is the foundation. Mm -hmm. We have to prepare ourselves for the word. Hey, look, there's a lot of people that read these scriptures, right? A lot of people, but they haven't prepared and says, no man, when he had lighted a candle, cover it up with a vessel or put it underneath a bed, but they set it on a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light. Meaning that man, when that, when, when you're prepared, when your heart is prepared mm -hmm. and you're serving and you're praying and you're receiving the, the word and, 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 and you're hanging out with good people and everything, and you're prepared, um, if you just skip over to verse 21, um, he basically says at the very end, you know, the people that know me, really that know me, they hear the word of God, and then they do it. So again, we've talked about it. It's you, you, his his real disciples are those that do they're doers of the word mm -hmm. they're not just hearers of the word we're doers so doers of the word means you've done the preparation your heart is 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 good when you hear the word of god it sets in Satan doesn't come, take it away. And then you actually start doing. And that's where you become, you know, disciples of Christ. So I know Pastor Paul's got some words of wisdom in here because this is a big parable, man. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, there, there, it, it was so hard to to just center it down to one scripture. I had texted E <laughs> earlier on like, what's what what scriptures on your heart? He sent me like five of them. And I'm like, and so I'm like, okay, pick one. And he's like, he already texted me back. But if I have to pick one, this is the one. So you know, I love what you were saying about those that get all hyped up. And I just want to point it out. And I know that I say it all the time, but Mark Latham was one of my disciples. This was one of the mentors that I worked with that I don't know if he remembers, but he always told me, never be so on fire that you burn yourself out. You have to walk into this thing consistently. You have to be prepared because going into it full force, we see it so many times, right? E? That people come into the come into the kingdom. Jen sees it. We all see it. People come into the kingdom. They're like, "Woo!" They're yeah. they're on fire, which is great. Yeah. But you got to be able to maintain that fire. All God wants mm -hmm. is one one lamp lit. So th this this came to me years ago when one of my mentees said at the church that we were at saying, you know, they don't allow the Holy Spirit to move. We don't, we don't see what, what we used to see this and that. And so I was mentoring this, this, this young man. And I finally asked him, I said, okay, so let me ask you this. So if, if that altar was full of people that were on fire, could you maintain discipling all mm. of those people? And he Ooh. said, uh, <laughs> probably not. I said, Okay, mm -hmm. so then your job mm -hmm. is to be one light. Mm -hmm. And if I'm one light and E's one light and Jen's is one light, guess what? Now we have fire. Mm -hmm. I said, but the Holy wow. Ghost fire isn't just about an altar call. Mm -hmm. It's really not. And so the word God gave me years ago was the after. I don't know if it's a book. I don't know what it is, but it's the after. What do you do after that altar call? What do you do after you receive the word? What do you do after you are on fire? What do you do with that? Yeah. And so it's imperative through this parable, Jesus is saying, listen, there's, there's all kinds of people. There's all kinds of seed that falls that goes by the wayside. Satan comes and he snatches it up. The other one gets burnt out because the sun is too hot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so even this morning, it's just crazy how this all works together. One of my life tips was, uh, let your, let your walk be about your talk mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same with the gospel. When we are able to receive it from God, sometimes we don't even have to open our mouths. <laughs> I mean, we literally don't have to open our mouths. Mm -hmm. Um, one of our uh, pastor's wives said at one time, every day preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And if anything fails, open your mouth. So what does that mean? Live your life before the people. Let them see the fruit. Don't walk up to somebody at work because you just got saved because I was like this. My When I got saved, my whole family was going to hell in a handbasket but me. I was calling everybody, man, you guys need to get to church because you're going to go to hell and this and that. And my family members like, whoa, dude, just last <laughs> week you were smoking that big fatty. So how are, what's like, come on now. So I say all that to say this and I'm going to stop talking and then he can come in. The truth is this, is that the kingdom of God is consistency. Mm hmm. The kingdom of God is, is walking this salvation out. The apostle Paul said it clearly. Let every man and woman walk out their salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Reverence to God saying, listen, I want to do your will. I want to be able to know what your will is. So I'm going to go back to the word. I'm going to read one verse. Even if it's one verse that you read a whole month, but you get it in your spirit. That's all that matters. So, E, mm -hmm. what you got, man? Wow. Man, that was good. Um, when Jens was sharing, you said it, and then Jens has shared it um, when it talks about, uh, what was that, in verse uh, 12? Uh, no, where's the devil? Uh, I think, and those who are upon the rock, uh, and those seed that fell upon the rock are the people who hear the word, receive it, and welcome it with joy, but then have it fall away. Uh, and a uh, pastor had broken down the one time and he used uh, after church. He said, the people got the word, 
the service ends and immediately they start talking about everything but the word. What are we going to eat? What are we going to this? And he used this illustration. And while everybody was like talking, yeah, you know, hey, how's the fan? Nah, nah, nah. You know, we'll take nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. But his point was the devil, he, he just used an analogy where the devil was just coming up the aisle, just snatching the word, just snatching what they just got. So he said, but Tani walked out the door, what they had just spent an hour, hour and a half getting got robbed. So you said consistency. And, and then what do we do after, you know, um, we get that word um, uh, it, and, and it's to live. You know, I, I was shocked to, to find out how many people when I got saved, I was shocked to find out how many people had knew about the Bible. I was shocked to, to, to see how many people they were they, they were quoting books in the Bible. I hadn't even got to Obadiah or something like the, the books I had never even read. And I'm like, but I would have never known that, not judgingly, but because of their lifestyle. And how they act, I just wouldn't have connected the two. That was not to say that the person wasn't saved. So when we talk about being that light, you know, everybody can read the book, you know, and it's good. But um, we should be getting uh, greater works we're supposed to do. We should be getting some results um, from this book. And like you said, um, uh, the scriptures that we read and meditate and one of mine has been Psalms 91. I mean, you know, Psalms 91 and, and and just all that it entails of God's protection and, and him watching over us and all of that stuff. And I said, I told my um, mentor, I said, I've seen that 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 chapter book that um, that chapter come literally alive on a whole nother level since COVID hit on a whole nother level where I said when I'm looking a thousand may fall at your uh a thousand may fall at your side uh ten thousand at your right hand and i'm looking around uh and, and it says in there we will only be as spectators looking on you know as stuff is happening all around us and i told him i said when i'm looking at what's going on privilege information when i'm looking at what's going on and i'm looking at my life the only explanation I have right now is Psalms 91. That's all I have because I'm saying this person got sick and this person got sick and this person has COVID and this person can't breathe. And I'm around all of these people. I'm around all these people. And I'm saying people coming back and, hey, how you doing? And I'm, I'm not telling nobody what to do, you know, but I'm, how you doing? Give them a hug. Hey, welcome back. How you? Yeah. I'm hearing different stories. One guy is almost out of here. Another guy, you know, lady, you know, wasn't do that bad, but I'm watching all of this. And so what I usually do is just pray for these people, you know, um, that God will intervene and that he'll get the glory out of this situation that not only will he draw them to him, but that he would get some glory out of the situation. But back to this privileged information in the word that's the only explanation i have for right now so somebody asked me well, how do you feel about 2020 or what's your i would just say psalms 91 and then also numbers uh 6 24 through 26 and i'm just saying this is amazing um that god loves us so like a good parent not that we don't experience trials and tribulations no nobody gets an easy pass but it's good to know that you can see that this book this word it works yeah it works and it's not just fables it's not just you know i i loved it i loved it when you were talking about how that pastor was saying you know that right after we receive the word right after we hear the word right after we read the word that if the heart's not ready and prepared that satan is coming and taking the word because he knows he's taking the seed and you know in verse eight luke Chapter 8, because that's the chapter we're on right now, verse 18. It says, Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that which he has. Meaning that, you know, look, Satan doesn't want the seeds, the word of God, to take root in us. He doesn't want that. So, you know, when, when you talked about how, you know, you started digging into the word of God and then you there weren't people really around you that, you know, really were living that. So you didn't see it in their example and you didn't even know they knew. 
Let me tell you, I was at an event one time and, you know, it was a church event and there was a Muslim a, a, who woman who said she told her story about how she and her family were over here visiting family of theirs when um, a war broke out in Iran where they lived and they couldn't go back. And um, she she spoke about how, you know, things that happened when she was a little girl, like around eight years old, she said that she was with her father and they were in the town and there was this big, huge crowd and all this commotion. And once her dad realized what was happening, he grabbed her and he pulled her all the way to the front of this of this big, huge crowd. And it was a person that was being beheaded. And he wanted her to see that at age eight because he got down afterwards and said, that's what will happen to you if you don't follow the way. And she said, so that's how she was brought up. And so she said when they were here in the States and they couldn't go back, um, she said when she was right at 18, she left her home. Her, and she didn't want to be with her parents. And she said every day of her life, since she saw that person being beheaded, she said, this is not right. This religion is not right. And she got a job and she said, because she was so just reserved, you know, and shy, she said she just would go to work and she would do her job. And she said she was there for five years and no one ever really talked to her about Christ. Mm -hmm. And she said, then a new woman um, started to work there. And she said, from the minute she started to work there, she started to say, um, you know, are you a believer? Do you know who Christ is? Do you know mm -hmm. who Jesus is? And she said, every day, this woman would talk to her about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm every day and then their con and then she would start asking her questions and then the conversation went to you know have you ever prayed do you know how to pray mm -hmm. and then this woman started praying with her and then of course she she became she converted and she became christian and she got baptized and and she said i often wonder you know we are living in the united states of america most people are christian she said why did nobody talk to me about Jesus? And it, it, man, it, it just, it goes to exactly what you're saying, Pastor. I mean, Biggie is we, it, and we talked about it at the very beginning of this month. We said, we, Jesus is the reason for the season. And if we're not talking about Jesus and if people can't see through our actions and through our example, that we're Christian and what we believe in and that, you know, that we're, we're not hiding our, our light. We're shining our light. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people ready to, to understand and to know that Jesus is our Lord and savior. He loves us so much. He knows everything we're going through. Jesus knew that every day that that woman that child and then that woman mm -hmm. thought about that every day and knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. She knew. And so we've just, you know, we've got to like, like Pastor Paul said, you know, what's the after? What do we do after we receive? Mm -hmm. What do we do after we learn? What do we do after we hear? What are we doing after? Because that really lets us know where our heart is. And it truly is, you know, I think Pastor Paul and Biggie said this. It's really what is your desire? You know, is your desire to know God? Is your desire to serve? Is your desire to, you know, what's the intent of your heart? It's just like Pastor Paul always says, it always gets back to the heart. It's a heart matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Man, this has been good. So as we wrap it up, uh, Big E's going to pray us out. Um, but you, I mean, we've all brought some great points. Um, that's it, it's 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 the life that we're in. It's the people that we're surrounded with. God will always send an opportunity. And to add to to um, the sermon that you know E heard, um, I've I've always said it jokingly, but it's true. Mm. Keep your butt out your mouth because you know so many conversations are. I'm believing, but man, you don't know my situation. It's like okay, so you just you just voided out the faith part. You follow what I'm saying? Like I mean, just just to add to that, this whole move to Colorado, there was no buts. Even though the butt was right here in my mind, I was like, no, no, this is a, 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 a total faith walk. And my wife and I both said, there is no buts. There is, is no afs, ands, ifs, or buts. There's none of that because we know that, that we need to go. And so I just encourage somebody today that whatever God has spoken to you to do, and you know that it's God, because you got to feel it in the pit of your belly to know that it's God, not some wishy-washy stuff. You know, I'm going to become an astronaut, but you never went to college. Um, there, there's, there's, <laughs> that's just not going to work. And so I encourage y'all today to really focus and dig deep, dig deep to find out how big and huge, great and merc and m merciful and majestic that God is. You will never falter. Mark says it this way as we close. A true Christian will talk about ones they love. Mm. Amen. So if we love Jesus and he has done a great work in our life, mm -hmm. hey, that's all we need to do. So, E, can you pray us out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for waking up in the word. Father God, we ask you, Lord God, to help us to be doers of the word. We declare that we will be doers of the word and not just hearers, Father God. Help us, Father God, to monitor our conversations, Father God. That even uh, as we talk, Father God, that people will feel the love without even quoting the scriptures, Father God, that they would know that there's something different about us, Father God. So we just thank you, Lord God, to know that we are more than conquerors, Father God. So as we go forward today, Father God, touching each and every heart and mind, Father God, that we take away from this word today, Father God, uh, to be a uh, good ground uh, for the word to saturate in, Father God, and to remember that your grace and your mercy is mixed in there, Father God, for when we get it wrong or we make Make a mistake, Father God, that we'll stay consistent and continue to press deeper in you, Father God, that you would get the glory. And we give you the praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm, amen, man. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Biggie, yeah, for coming on the show. And thank you so much to all of our community yes. of believers. Um, we are just we we ask you to 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 share this episode out, share it out, mm -hmm. invite people to our community. I know sometimes it's hard. Um, you know, but remember, after we receive, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Share this out, share this out and invite people so we can build together and we can strengthen one another so we can withstand the storm. And we know it's storming outside. <laughs> so until we meet again tomorrow at 630 a.m. or whenever you watch the replay, be big, be bold. And most importantly, be, be you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.